Hello and welcome to the uh, first uh, part of the Junkyard Specials Guitar Rebuild Series. Uh, if you watch my other two videos on the Hard Luck King guitar and the uh, sound check between the Hard Luck King guitar and the uh, Squire by Fender Strat, uh, I decided to rebuild both guitars. And uh, I'm going to go through some of the things that I found when I tore the guitars apart, uh, some parts that I ordered, and uh, what the current condition is of uh, both the guitars. So let's get started. Uh, the first guitar was the Hard Luck Kings, and here's a picture of that. This is what it looked like uh, before I tore it apart. Uh, and I had to obviously do some adjustments and things to get it to even play. Um, Appearance-wise, it looked okay at first glance, but uh, I really started looking at it and I tore it apart. I found quite a few things that was just wrong. So anyway, that was the uh, picture for the guitar, Hard Luck King's guitar, what it looked like originally. Well, so I tore it apart, and I was kind of disappointed what I found. So here's the uh, picture of the back of the pick guard. Now, it's a little blurry, but it'll give you the idea. Uh, these uh, pots, what they're using here, they're they're like mini pots. I don't even know when. The standard changed from full-size pots to mini pots. But I'm old school, and my way of thinking is the full-size pots are a hell of a lot better than the mini pots. But I'm sure mini pots save some guitar company a few cents per guitar. Uh, you know, obviously less wood to carve out of the bodies, so the guitars get made quicker. Uh, smaller electronics, smaller costs. So you'd estimate per guitar, if they're building mass quantity, they probably saved a whopping 15 cents per guitar. Uh, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, I'm old school. I like the bigger pots. So uh, I'll get to a better picture of that. Uh, here we go. So here's a, uh, obviously, a little better picture, close up. Uh, give you a idea of the size of the pots. They're, they're roughly a uh, little smaller than a nickel, a little bigger than a dime. So look at it that way. Uh, very disappointed with them. Uh, and unfortunately I found that they're not the only companies doing it, but we'll get to that in a minute. So uh, yeah, like I said, that was the, uh, the back of the pit guard that came off the Harlock Kings guitar. Uh, very disappointed with uh, the parts used. Now let's get over to uh, parts that I could reuse, or so I thought I could, off the Hard Luck Kings guitar for the rebuild. So what we have here is the uh, the tuners. Well, at first glance, without actually taking the strings off and uh, testing them out, they look fine, but the shafts on the uh, tuners themselves, even with the nut tight, uh, they had so much slop in them that they, you know, binding up and just really crap. So I end up throwing those away. Threw away the electronics too. Wasn't going to use that again. I screw that. If I'm going to rebuild a guitar, it's going to be with quality parts. So, anyway, that was the tuners, so the tuners went in the trash. Uh, okay, now we get over to the body. The body of the Hard Luck Kings guitar. Alright, so what we got here is uh, I tore off the uh, all the electronics and just got it down to just the body. Now, you'll notice something that's missing here. In the uh, cavities for the uh, where it shows the humbuckers, uh, spaces. Uh, there's no side cutouts uh, along the sides of the bottom 
for long screws. So if you mount a, uh, a humbucker and you use the standard mounting screws in the uh, pit guard, uh, you're probably looking at about an inch and a half to inch and three quarter long screws. Well, if you use those screws, your pit guard is going to set off of the body about a quarter inch. So you're going to have to go with a smaller screw or carve out uh, more of the wood to accommodate the longer screws. Really bad design. <laughs> okay, so that was one thing you noticed. Uh, the actual cuts themselves, um, really poorly done. And you see you know, a piece of wood uh, clipped off in between uh, the cavity for the bridge pickup and the uh, middle pickup. Uh, there's actually a piece of wood that got chipped off, looks like, when they were making the body. And they uh, just painted over it, said screw it. Uh, another thing that you don't see, no shielding. Uh, this is just actually the paint over bare wood. There's no shielding in here at all which would explain why when I plugged in to the dirty channel with the Hard Luck Kings guitar, I was getting a bunch of hissing and popping noises. Uh, the guitar wasn't shielded. The only shielding was on the back of the pick guard where the pot sat, and that's it. The body had zero shielding in it whatsoever. No shielding paint, no shielding tape. Uh, so, yeah, it gets, uh, gets better. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, here's a little different uh, picture showing you basically the same shit. Uh, so not only did they just paint in the cavities and put no shielding in there, but when they did paint, they didn't bother cleaning out the debris from their uh, cuts. So you got little pieces of uh, wood shavings underneath the paint sticking up. I understand being in a hurry to get shit done, but a little bit more time puts out a lot better quality part. But, uh, yeah, so there's a lot more work there for me to do. And, like I said, the cuts themselves, very poor. Uh, very just uh, bewildered about what I found. It's like where the uh, the bridge screws are. you got six screws for the bridge. Well, there's seven holes there for some reason. Don't know why, but they're there. Uh, so I'd say somebody goofed. And then where the uh, actual uh, spring bar fits through the body, that uh, that cavity's cut crooked. Uh, so there's more work for me to have to fix. Uh, generally, it's just a mess. Uh, let's go to the back of the guitar now. This one was a good one. You'll like this. Okay, so here's the back of the guitar. Here's the cavity. Now, take a close look here, and you can see where the cavity was cut uh, for the opening uh, spring bar, and it's crooked as shit. Uh, you can also see just off of there that uh, there's big gouges of wood missing, you know, where they tried drilling through and it just uh, totally screwed up the wood. So more things for me to fix. Uh, thank God for wood putty. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, and again, here's another prime example. No shielding whatsoever. Some people will shield the spring cavity, some won't. I, I personally prefer the uh, spring cavity be shielded also. But, uh, yeah, there's no shielding there. All right, so that was a hard luck King's guitar. All right, so the body needs a shitload of work. Uh, the neck, I was hoping just to put a new nut in it and, uh, you know, be able to reuse the neck. Well, I inspected it and uh, took a real close look and found out that the fretboard itself would have to be reworked because it's thicker 
at the nut than it is at the heel. Uh, you know, you take a look at it, and it looks weird, but yeah, it's a good sixteenth of an inch thicker at the nut than it is down at the heel. And it's poorly cut. Uh, when they built that guitar after I got the strings off and I could really feel it, the only thing they put on is just a sealer. They didn't put any kind of finish on it whatsoever. So it was still kind of rough, had a little rough texture to it. Uh, but there, there's no clear coat over the uh, fretboard. No, there's no nothing other than sealer. So I took that into account. I took into account, you know, the fact that the nut uh, was shit and uh, needed to be replaced. And to replace it, I would have to cut out some more wood out of the uh, area where the nut is to get a full-size nut in there. Uh, the other issue that I found was frets. So somebody massaged the hell out of these frets to deal with the fact that the fretboard was screwed, deal the fact with the, uh, the nut was screwed, and to deal with the fact that the neck, because of wood shavings, in the neck joint, the neck actually sat crooked on the body. Uh... There's a whole bunch of stuff wrong with it. So I just said, you know what? I'm just going to scrap that neck. It ain't even worth the money to try to get it fixed. Uh, so I ordered a new neck. So I'm going to pop that up. And uh, here's that. This is what I ordered for the guitar. We got our, our classic, uh, they call it the hockey stick, or some people call it the banana headstock. Um, I went with the maple on maple. And I want the uh, tilted back head, so that way, you know, I don't have to have the uh, the string routes, uh, you know, typical Fender string grab routes things, whatever the hell you call them. I don't have to put anything extra into the headstock. Uh, so I ordered this neck, and let me pull up a different picture of it so you can see what I had to do here. Um, here we go. So in this picture you can see that the uh, the actual neck itself they're showing it here with a slight little curve. Well what arrived at my doorstep wasn't curved at all. It was squared heel. There's no corner curves, no nothing. It's just squared. Boom. Uh, so, to get it to fit the uh, Hard Luck Kane's guitar body that is curved and get the measurements down right, yeah, I had to uh, cut with a file and uh, put some corners into the heel and round it out a bit to fit the socket. Um, also rounded out the corners of the uh, the fretboard to give it that more of a kind of fenderish look so it's not uh, more it doesn't look so much like a jackson now uh, as it does uh a fender where it's rounded uh tips of the uh fretboard at the heel which you know I'll show you that in a minute uh let's get over to the next one here I want to show you okay now in this picture look what you see this is what I'm used to seeing on guitars that do not have a Floyd. This is a full-size nut. This is not one of those little mini nuts. And I thought it was just Hard Luck Kings doing that. Uh, I got to taking a look around when I went to a Guitar Center, and I guess that's another way for manufacturers to save a few pennies per guitar is to put in those wafer-thin little tiny nuts that ain't worth a shit for nothing. So, needless to say, this guitar neck uh, came with a full-size nut, uh, which was a big selling point for me. I, I like that. Um, so, that's our uh, new neck. And just as a comparison, I'll, I'll pop up the uh, the old one also off the Hard Luck Kings, and we can do a comparison there, and you can see the difference in the nut. 
So full size nut versus the new standard for guitar nuts on a guitar. Yeah, huge difference. Um, just the cut of the guitar itself, the cut of the neck joint, um, where the nut goes on. It just looks a whole lot more classier and looks a lot more durable to me. So uh, that's our new guitar neck. And now with the guitar neck, the new one, uh, I already threw away the tuners because they were crap, so I know I needed new tuners. So let me pop this up. Uh, here's that same guitar neck, the new one with tuners installed. Uh, this is the uh, front view. Let's see if you can guess what kind of tuners they are before I show you the back. I spent a little bit of money on these, but uh, you know what? Hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna build something, build it to last. Put some good quality shit into it. So anyway, uh, that's the uh, the front of the uh, headstock with the tuners. Okay, you ready? I hope you are. And and most people wouldn't do this, but I'm not most people. I don't want to build crap. I want to take crap and make it into gold. So with that in mind, here you go. Boom. Hip shot. Open geared locking tuners. Not cheap, but at the same time, pretty damn durable. So that is now what is on the uh, the new neck. And a big difference, I'm telling you. Weighs a little more, so it's a little more weight on the neck than the stock tuners would have been. But at the same time, I can deal with it. Okay, so that was that. Um, one thing I did uh, want to get because the electronics were crap. And, and I really wanted to rebuild it with full-size humbuckers. So I ordered this uh, pickguard. It's a loaded pickguard. It's got Seymour Duncans in it. It's got a 59 and a uh, JB. And these particular pickguards are set with coil splitting. Uh, one switch for each uh, pickup. So I can make a... Uh, the bridge pickup single coil or I can make the neck pickup single coil or both pickup single coil at the same time and via the sliding three-way switch I can have one on both on or just the other on um, so anyway I ordered that and that's that's what you're looking at right now all right so let's get to um, what I wanted to do for the bridge. Now, originally in my other videos, I mentioned putting a, a Floyd Rose on it, and I just could not wrap my head around spending two hundred and fifty dollars for a Floyd Rose uh, bridge. Uh, it's just freaking crazy. But I understand why they charge that, and. Floyd Rose bridges for a non-floating bridge. Uh, they have a very unique setup, but at this time I, I really couldn't see you spending that kind of money. So I went with this instead. Went with the uh, the Babix uh, full contact bridge, and it's it's a tremolo bridge. Uh, very similar to, uh, you know, Floyd Rose and the stock bridge that was on it. Uh, there are some big differences in it, and it's a little better made. And, you know, it looks good. Um, so that was the, uh, the bridge I ordered. And get to the next one. Oh, okay. Uh, we can't get to that one yet. So, um, I mentioned about the new pick guard. Well, I got the new pick guard, and that's when I found out the screws were too long. Uh, 
because, you know, there was a lack of carving in the uh, cavities for the actual where the humbuckers would go. And then I said, okay, well, at least let me see if any of these holes line up, you know, for the mounting of the pit guard. One hole out of 11 actually matched up. One hole. The rest were all off. So guess what? That made more work. So now what do I have to do? Plug the existing holes, get the plate where I need it to be, and then mark it out and drill it. Put brand new holes in just to mount the uh, pickguard. Again, more work. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, a couple of days ago I came real close to saying, you know what, I'm just going to trash this hard luck Kane's guitar and throw it on the freaking dumpster. But that part of me that just says, you know what, you like a challenge. And it is definitely a challenge to make this into a decent guitar. So I wrestled with myself a little bit. And I said, okay, fine, I'll keep it and I'll, I'll work on it. So anyway, I, I got that pit guard. Um, and of course, you know, the holes lined up. So... Even though I said that I was not going to modify the Fender Strat in one of my other videos, I was probably going to leave it as is. Uh, my curiosity got the best of me. I ended up ripping out the old pickguard out of the Fender, uh, the Squire. And I'm glad I did. Because, oh, what did I do with it? Oh, it's somewhere else in the room. Uh, it turns out that Fender's also using the mini uh, pots also. Very disappointed. Uh, uh, I, I can't even describe it, but it's got awful. Uh, you know, I was thinking, geez, you know, Hard Luck Kane's guitar and the Squire guitars must be made at the same factory. They're using the same kind of parts. But the quality of the body on the... Uh, Squire is a lot better than the quality of the Hard Luck Kings guitar. So um, I end up uh, taking, and I'm going to pop both of them up so you can kind of get the idea here. I end up taking the stock one, or not the stock, but the uh, loaded pick guard that I got in the mail. So I got that one, and I decided I really didn't care for the shape too much. But I wanted to see if it would fit onto the Squire. Well, it turns out it fits. Um, eight out of 11 holes match up. So there's a few holes that I would have to plug the existing and then drill some new holes in. But once I got the new pick guard onto the uh, Squire, it just looked right. It looked like that's something that it should have been. So, because I wasn't happy with the design and I want to do something a little bit different, uh, I went and modified the shape. So here's a uh, pick of the modified shape of the pick guard. And obviously, you know, this is just a pick. I didn't have the uh, pick guard on the body yet. So it's missing a couple holes and so forth. But I I picked the shape that actually complements the fender headstock and the general curves of the uh, the body itself. And, and this is something I was just doodling with one day, and I said, what can I do? And, you know, I drew it out on paper, and it's like, hmm, that could be something. And, uh, you know, it turned out pretty decent. So... Uh, the loaded pick guard that's been modified now is now on the Squire. And I'm going to do something different with the uh, Hard Luck Kings guitar. All right. Uh, where was that? Oh, so let me give you an uh, update here on what I did. So hang on. Grab this. So here is the Hard Luck Kings guitar, and yes, that is blue painter's tape. Um, and I had to fill in a bunch of holes, and, you know, I, 
I'm sure most of you are aware that how you plug holes. The easy way is to go get some good wood glue and some toothpicks. And, uh, you know, put some glue down on the holes and shove a toothpick in there and wait for it to dry. Clip off what you can of the toothpick and then you do some sanding. So I haven't got to the sanding part yet on the Hard Luck Kings guitar, but, you know, the holes that I needed to have filled here are filled. Uh, here's the back, which you can see the toothpicks. Let's see if I can get the right angle there. So none of these holes matched up with the uh, the new plate that I got for the back of this guitar. Which, you know, big surprise there. Uh, the plate that I got, uh, you know, higher quality. So the whole pattern's different. And got a bunch of holes now that are no good for nothing. So anyway, here's, here's an example of the toothpick in the holes. So that is basically where I've gotten with the body so far uh, on the Hard Luck Kings guitar. I did get some um, uh, some of the shielding paint. and I put one coat, not three, but one coat inside the uh, cavities here. And part of the reason I wanted to do that, so when I put the pick guard down, you know, I can rub or move it back and forth a little bit and actually see what's hitting. So I know where I need to cut out uh, some more wood to get the clearance I need. Uh, that's why I only did one coat. Um, so there's there's a few spaces that I'm going to have to cut out down here for full, full size pots. Um, and also where the uh, one of the tone pots goes, I'm going to actually have to widen this area a little tiny bit to get that to fit in there. Uh, you know. I hate to say this, and I'm sure somebody's going to ask me. So I'll just, you know, answer this question right now. Will I ever buy another Hard Luck Kings guitar? Fuck no. I ain't going to waste my goddamn money. There's too much damn work involved just to get it to where it needs to be. But that's just me. And again, I'm basing that off of one sample. But I can't see any guitar not having good quality control while it's being made to have this many damn problems. Uh, so, you know, wherever it's being made, they are building crap and it shows. Uh, but, hey, I knew it when I bought it that I just wanted to modify it anyway, but damn, I didn't think I was going to have to do this much freaking work to it. So, anyway, that's the body with the uh, Hard Luck Kings guitar. Now... Here is the neck that's going to go on the Hard Luck Kings guitar. And again, you can see the tuners. Here's the back. Let me see if I can squeeze that in a little closer for you. There you go. So you can kind of see the back of it there. Back of the headstock. Get it flipped over. You know, I'm kind of old school. Yeah. Listen to hard rock in the 80s, and, you know, this this was the headstock. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you had, you know, a hard rock guitar or your guitar heroes had guitars, chances are they had at least one banana headstock or hockey stick headstock guitar in their collection. Uh, so, you know, don't let them bullshit you. These were very popular back in the 80s. So, anyway, uh, that's the neck. And here, God, this is going to be a little trickier, but you can see how much work I've had to do to that heel. And that was all done with a file. I had no power tools. So that was all done by hand, by me, with a file. And, you know, now i got to get some good sandpaper, sand it down, smooth it out just a little bit with the sandpaper. But I got the general contour down to where it needs to be. And uh, I'll flip it over here so you can see the, the curve there. Right back here. How oh, I had to shape that out. So, uh, yeah, this neck is ready for this body, the Hard Luck Kings guitar body. And, uh, you know, more work. 
But that's for another video when I get some more work done on the Hard Luck Kings guitar. Now, by the title and by my greeting, I'm sure you have asked yourself already, Ray, what's underneath the Iron Maiden tapestry? Well, that's uh, the other guitar. The uh, Fender. And uh, let me pop this up to so just remind you what it looked like before. Okay, so here is the Squire guitar. And you can see what it looked like before. <clears throat> so you ready? And keep in mind, this is just it's just mocked up right now. I don't have any of the wires soldered where they need to be soldered. I don't have strings on it yet, but I just mocked it up. Just to give you an idea of where the squire is going. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Oh, get the damn thing out there. There you go. So you can see, let me tilt that just a smidge more. So I definitely, uh, like I said, I cut down the, uh, the fretboard to give it a shape that was more complementary to the headstock and the general uh, shape of the body, the contours. And with this particular candy apple color, it goes very well. And the Babbix bridge, the full contact uh, tremolo bridge, I decided to use it on the fender. Which means I gotta do something else for the Hard Luck Kings guitar as far as a bridge. And because of the, that body being as messed up as it is, I may just have to shell out the money for a Floyd Rose, whether I like it or not. So, uh, there's the fender. Uh, and again, it's just mocked up. You know, I don't have the uh, wire soldered in here or, you know, in the back on the, uh, the spring plate. But uh, this is just to give you an idea of how it would look. Um, and you'll notice I plugged a couple holes here. And I had to plug some holes down here. So, you know, obviously the paint doesn't match because, it well, it hasn't been repainted. Um, which, that's down the road. My first thing is to get the guitar perfectly set up to where I can pull it apart, take it to the paint shop, and get the paint I want on it. And then uh, bring it back, put it all back together, and it'll work. So, uh, again, you know, this is the shape. So I always wondered about that. Why did uh, whoever came up with the idea of taking and making the uh, the pit guard wrap all the way up around here to cover up this wood? Honestly, you know, if this is painted, that just looks sharp as shit, you know. But that's just me. Uh, now with this one, you know, I had the same issue with the back. Let me uh, get it flipped around here. Let's see if you can see that. It's kind of difficult. Well, you'll get the idea. So here I had to plug all six of these holes too. Uh, because, uh, again, the quality pit guard. For an import guitar, none of the damn holes line up. So I had to plug those too. So I plugged them, sanded them, and again, this had to be painted. But now uh, I can put the new pick guard on, drill some new holes for the new pick guard, or not the pick guard, but the uh, cover plate. And, uh, you know, it'll look just fine. But uh, obviously, you know, you upgrade. Expect any cover plates that you get or the pit guards themselves that you get, the holes aren't going to match up 100%. You might get lucky, get 80% of the holes match up, but don't count on it. Expect work. So uh, that's where we are for this uh, part of the series on both guitars. Uh, this one... Percentage-wise, I'd say this one's about 60% done. Um, 
the Hard Luck Kane's guitar, 20%. Uh, I still got a lot of carving to do on that uh, Hard Luck Kane's guitar body. It sucks. Again, you get what you pay for. Uh, for 100 bucks, I was hoping the body would have been in a lot better shape. But, you know, this day and age, 100 bucks just ain't what it used to be. So, <laughs> Yeah, keep that in mind if you're going to go out and buy a guitar. Uh, so that's that's it for uh, this run through, uh, uh, you know, this episode of the series on uh, the uh, junkyard specials guitars. Uh, Till next time, as they say, rock on, peace, and later. Okay, get out of here already. Jesus Christ. Got things to do. Leave me alone. Arr, yeah, I'm getting old and I'm cranky. Piss off. <laughs> okay. Rock on.